Hello everyone, welcome back to Hope Quest this week and today I am with Natalie Casey who has been doing a half marathon around Kenilworth which, whew, that is impressive. <laughs> so um, all money raised from doing this half marathon is going towards the charity Tommy's. So I'm going to be having a conversation today in front of you all with Natalie about all her motivations behind it. So hi Natalie, how are you today? I'm great, thanks Cora. How are you doing? Oh, I'm great too. Loving the bad weather. <laughs> no, it's such a change, isn't it? I'm just looking out the window now. It's such a change from the weekend. Yeah, definitely. So it, I think it's much, it's very welcome though, because it's a nice yeah. coolness. Nice so change. let's get into our questions then. Yeah. Sorry, my tablet seems to be playing up <laughs> with my questions on. But um so originally you had planned to run the London half marathon what was your motivation behind that so yeah I was going to do the London landmarks half marathon um at the very end of March and obviously it was cancelled because of um, the coronavirus and um, pandemic my motivation behind it was to raise money for Tommy's the baby charity so um as a family, we have been through a really, really, really difficult time over the last few years. So um, December 2016, um, I was pregnant with twin girls, Daisy and Georgie, and um, I went into early labour. So I just, there's no reason, we've never found out a reason why, I just went into labour at 25 weeks and they were born. Um, and both lived for just one day. Um, and so, um, as you can imagine, you know, living with that, grief afterwards was 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 horrendous it was like living in a nightmare and it literally just tore our lives apart um and then it didn't get any easier for us um we then went on to have two miscarriages um and um and that was over a period of sort of 12 months after losing our girls um and and then at that point then we'd completely lost hope you know we just thought we would never come home with with a baby um we've got a son together already jack and um, he's 11 but um we, you know we'd completely lost hope of, of having any more um and then we were referred to um a specialist team in coventry um who um is headed up by a lady called professor siobhan quemby and this team um, does pioneering research funded by Tommy's um, into the reasons for um, preterm delivery and also recurrent miscarriage. And we fit the bill for obviously for both of those. So we were referred to Professor Quemby and the Tommy's team. And, um, and then um, our first appointment with Professor Quemby was on the 9th of March, 2018. And on the 10th of March 2019, we had our daughter, Livy. Um, oh, yeah, so, um, so um, a really, really happy ending. And, um, and for us, you know, therefore, what, for me wanting to raise money for Tommy was, was be able to, you know, to give back really to a charity that, that's done so much for us. So, um, so yeah, so living in Kenilworth and having this specialist team in Coventry, we didn't even know anything about them um, and that they even existed. So, yeah, it's thanks to Tommy's that um, for all the work that they do, really. Um, so we wanted to give something back. Yeah, it's absolutely brilliant that you are doing this to thank them. And I personally hadn't heard about Tommy's until I read your article and did a bit more research into them. But it's absolutely amazing what they're doing. Yeah, it's it, yeah and it's brilliant that they managed to help you in the end because I couldn't imagine having to go through everything you did that must have been heartbreaking it really was and you know um in in terms of impacting on mental health as well I mean it was heartbreaking and and, and you know you can't even put into words what what it's like to to lose um lose a baby like that you know it literally does turn your whole life upside down and it, it is like I said before it's literally like living in a nightmare and then after then, I think for me, going through the miscarriages then, it really, really affected my mental health because um, obviously there was the deep grief, but then going from that into further loss and further loss, then my anxiety went through the roof and I was absolutely convinced all the time that something terrible was going to happen. I was having panic attacks. I was really, really struggling to cope. Um, and so, yeah, it really does affect you in, in such a, you know, such a huge, huge way. Um, and it's thanks to charities like Tommy's who not only do this pioneering research into, into, um, into preterm delivery, into recurrent miscarriage, but they also provide mental health support as well. So as part of their, 
they sort of protocol and offering and um, they offer a counseling service and that was invaluable for us um, to be able to talk through some of um, some of our, our challenges so so yeah what they do is incredible yeah and it's fantastic just that they manage to also give you mental health support because if you're going through just any grief like that it's going to take a toll on you and the fact that they're helping you to achieve having a baby and giving you support on the side that's fantastic it really is it's so um it's it's so well thought out and so uh, and executed in such a way their whole um sort of offering is is so reassuring and so supportive and so caring you know um we know the nhs is absolutely incredible but also it's incredibly stretched so quite often when you are experiencing these episodes of loss and going through these things in your life there is only so much that that you know that a, a really stretched um organization can offer um and so being able to then be taken care of um, when you're going through because i think the other thing to mention as well is that um, while pregnancy after loss is a huge huge blessing um and it's just wonderful and and um and our daughter is amazing actually pregnancy after loss itself um is incredibly difficult to cope with and manage um you know anxiety goes absolutely through the roof you know you've been through the worst case of a scenario you've been that statistic that you know that single figure statistic that's that is you and that's happened to you so therefore why wouldn't it happen again and i think that you know you deal with all of that and it's like walking on a cliff edge um and so they support you through all of that so um so yeah just just absolutely incredible yeah I'm that sorry I'm getting a bit teary <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Just so oh I couldn't imagine going through all that like I said before and you're it's amazing and you're so strong that you've managed to deal with that but mm -hmm. um so as you had said before about how you wanted to give back and thank the charity for everything they've done Due to the pandemic, you were no longer able to do the London Half Marathon. So where did the idea for running the distance around Kenilworth come from? So um, actually, it was an idea that I'd had initially because I just thought I'd, I'd already raised quite a bit of money. Um, I think we'd got about £600 or I'd got six, about £600 so far. And so I thought, well, I'm just going to do it anyway. Um, I'm just going to run it. Um, and, and, I, and it was also something like I really wanted to do as well. I wanted to get that half marathon done and, and achieve it. So I just thought, I'm just going to run it and I'll just run it around Kenilworth. And then actually the Tommy's, the whole London Landmarks um, half marathon organisation then said, why, why don't you consider as, as a, as a, um, as participants doing a local landmarks half marathon. And so what then I did, um, was um and i was originally going to do it before the lockdown came in and the, the limit on the exercise um and then obviously it just wasn't possible to do that um and so when when boris lifted that limitation um i asked my son to come with me on his bike oh. so he came with me so i wasn't on my own um so he cycled with me um and um, and we chose um our route and we chose the landmarks around kenilworth that we would go around um as part of it so we went to like obviously like the castle and the memorial um at abbey fields we went to kind of with cricket club and um and um and kind of with town football club we went we, we ran to coventry so we got to the coventry sign and did a picture there and, and then the kenwood <laughs> sign as well so so yeah and abbey fields of course so yeah so that's that was kind of um our thinking really so we were going to do it anyway um and then it was an, a, a suggestion from the organizers to do like a local landmark so so yeah so we planned our route and, and did it Oh, that's brilliant. I love that you got your son involved as well. That is just adorable. And it's yeah. brilliant that he wanted to get involved. Yeah, he was great. He was such a brilliant cheerleader. <laughs> I got to about 14k and I would, I just, it, we were at Gibbet Hill um, going towards, um, from, Coventry, uh, from Kenilworth to Coventry and it's just like this and then this. And then this like literally one hill after another after another and I was just like I can't do it I can't do it and he just he was was so lovely and cheering me on he was a great little cheerleader so yeah it was good to do it together yeah we'll yeah. never forget <laughs> definitely and you, you'll always have that image of him on his bike just yeah go <laughs> you can do it mom think of all the people that have sponsored you you can do it <laughs> oh, well he definitely deserves some recognition for brilliant cheerleading I think <laughs> And from doing this half marathon 
around Kenilworth as well, you've managed to raise over £1,500. So congratulations. That is amazing. Yeah, yeah. We're really, really pleased. I originally had an aim of 750 so we've doubled that. Um, and so, yeah, just delighted um, to just give an idea of what that can do. You know, £10-ish um, um, covers the cost of a, one of their researchers for an hour's time. So, you know, with all of that money, there is a significant chunk of research that could happen. Um, and charities at the moment, you know, their income is completely flatlined. So, um, so every penny helps. Um, and so, yeah, it really will be able to make a difference to other families. And I think that was a, that's really important to us. We've done, we've done um, quite a bit of fundraising since we lost our girls. And we've always wanted to do it to be able to help other families. Um, I feel that um, when you've been through something like we have, there is a, real drive within you to be able to help others and support them and also as well you know to be able to keep your, the memory of our girls alive as well you know and to be able to parent them in a way they're not here but you know we can still keep on um you know being their mum and their dad um in in our own way really so yeah and you use their memory to do all this amazing stuff as well so yeah they're always exactly. gonna be there for you yeah definitely we felt like that we felt that they were definitely with us and spurring us on so um with the amount of money you've raised as well you've had so much support from people and it's phenomenal is there anything you'd like to say to all of your supporters oh uh, yeah just massive thank you really you know um it like i say the money will make a huge huge difference to to tommy's and you know who knows how many more babies will be here as a result of that so yeah a massive thank you from the bottom of our heart and also as well every donation came with really lovely kind words and we had so much support on the day we had people um, on the high street um cheering us on um and uh, and and it was just you know really really lovely feeling very uplifting and for that we're really really grateful so for all of the donations and the kind words and the support a massive thank you Oh, I'm sure all your supporters would love to say thank you to you too and the charity as well. Yes, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, I know Tommy's really grateful. So yeah, <laughs> that's brilliant. So um, I also threw in a bit of a fun question that I sent you just to kind of make it more fun. So yeah. if you were an animal, what would you be and why? So this is a really good question, isn't it? These are the types of questions I when I when I interview people for work, I have like a few. Um, like softer questions at the end so this yeah. is a good <laughs> I think um, I'm a massive animal lover and I'm a vegetarian um, and I love I love all animals but I particularly love um, dolphins giraffes they're my absolute favorite <laughs> but I think if I had to choose to be an animal it would be my dog Lily, who's actually at what perfect time? <laughs> that was I brilliant think. timing, definitely. <laughs> That's the coming, I'll just get her. <laughs> we are now going to see a dog, everyone. So, <laughs> she oh, is. she's adorable. <laughs> she is, she's amazing. That was perfect timing. Well done, Lils. Yeah, so <laughs> she's, uh, she's uh, been an absolutely lovely companion to me all through the years. Um, so yeah, I would be Lily, 100%. She's the kindest, sweetest soul. Oh, and she has perfect timing as yes, well. Has, so that's yeah. excellent, <laughs> impeccable. <laughs> She's secretly been in the corner listening to you this whole time. <laughs> oh, bless her. Oh, she is adorable. <laughs> you. So, um, our final question to finish off today's interview is if you could give one message to the world, what would it be? I mean, there are so many right now and so many poignant messages on, on much, much bigger issues. But I think just to keep the thread of what I've been talking about in terms of, of baby loss um, and supporting people, if you ever know of anybody that goes through the loss of a baby then I think my message would be um, that they want to talk about their baby they want to keep their memory alive so don't be frightened to broach the conversation don't be frightened to ask them you know about their child um, refer to them and, and speak their name because that is something that before I'd experienced loss like this I would have always avoided because I would have always thought I was 
perhaps opening a wound or, 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 or upsetting somebody, but actually when they've been through something like this, people want to talk about, about their baby and they want to keep their memory alive. Um, and I think the other message would be um, that quite often people can have really, really well-meaning advice and, 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 give, uh, and, and give advice and, and share thoughts and, um, and, and, and actually it can be quite hurtful. I think what people need when they've been through something like this is just for you to listen and just for you to put an arm around and just say, you know, I don't know what to say. Other than that, I'm so sorry. Um, I think they would be my messages for, for what we've talked about. Those are absolutely lovely messages and thank you so much for um, letting me interview you today and speaking out about your story. You've been absolutely inspirational. Oh, well, thank you, Cora. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for the opportunity. It's okay. So thank you everyone for watching today and stay tuned for next week's edition of Inspire Warwick. Thank you and bye.